started. So I want to start by saying who this presentation is for. Um, you might not think that this is for you, but really this presentation falls into two groups of people, is, is geared at two different groups of people. First, um, for most of the people probably watching, it's going to be geared towards developers. If you have, if you're in charge of some application, some project um, on GitHub, you know, any, any um, open source project, if it has config, user configurable settings, this talk is for you. And I want you to pay attention because I'm going to explain to you how you can uh, how you can maintain those settings and uh, and um, provide tools for deploying s settings for your project um, in a organization. And then the other group that this is really geared for toward is system administrators. Um, mainly, Windows system administrators are going to know what I'm talking about here. Linux system admins have been working around this issue for a long time, and this is showing you how to do it. In, in a Windows world. So if you've got an Active Directory environment and you've got um, a bunch of client machines, uh, then, then this talk is for you. Um, so let me talk about what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, of course, this is about group policy. And I'm gonna go over um, what group policy is, because so, some of you may, ha may have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, if you've used Puppet, you, um, to just deploy settings in in a Windows environment, then um, then you may be familiar with this, or f familiar with the, this idea, this concept. Um, and then I'm going to talk about what group policies we have in Samba already. And then I'm going to show you how to create a server side extension for an uh, Active Directory domain controller or Active Directory compatible if you're using Samba ADDC. Um, and then I'll show you how to use a client side or create a client side extension for a Linux client for deploying these settings from uh, uh, from Active Directory. So first off, um, what group policy? What is group policy? So the purpose of group policy is to distribute policies and preferences for various applications to machines within an organization. Uh, the policies affect the working environment of users and machine accounts in an act in Active Directory. These policies are, of course, becoming really important. As, uh, for example, as companies embrace remote work, um, they need to be able to manage their their um, uh, the, their employees and their their machines and their uh, their environment that's in a distributed um, setting. Uh, it's also important for for labs, for example, to display deploy settings to computers in a lab. Uh, so, a group policy object, it is a group of settings created using the Microsoft Management Console. Um, if you don't use Windows, you probably aren't familiar with this. Uh, if you use, um, if you prefer command line, the Samba tool GPO command can be used to manage a lot of the uh, things that you would do in the Microsoft Management Console. Uh, group policies. When you set these settings, they're stored on the Sysfall network share. That's an SMB share that's pr uh, provided for all um, uh, in every ADDC environment. Uh, gr group policy objects are associated with an Active Directory container, such as site do sites, domains, or organizational units. Uh, GPOs are applied to clients in logical order. Uh, local policies first, uh, which we actually don't provide in Samba. But in Windows, it provides local policies. Uh, and then there are site policies, domain policies, and then OU, organizational unit-wide policies. Now, a server-side extension it's a, um, is, is how you set the settings from the server. Uh, Microsoft provides two mechanisms for extending group policy um, if you're using uh, the group policy management console. Uh, you can use administrative templates or ADMX templates. Uh, these are XML files that you place on the sysfall, and they indicate how the group policy management console will display these policy options for uh, system administrators to set the policies. Um, you can also use a group policy management extension. Uh, they follow a specific C++ template, and um, some group policy vendors, uh, like proprietary vendors, use this method. I haven't written anything like that um, for Samba, uh, but it is an option. Uh, not that I like writing Windows code. Uh, 
<laughs> or Microsoft code. Anyway, in uh, Samba 4.15 and forward, I've added the Samba tool GPO manage command, like I mentioned earlier, which lets you um, set policies on the sysfall. So it implements some of the, the features that the group policy management console provides. And this is useful for sysadmins who don't like to leave the console. <laughs> and a client side extension. Now, a client side extension is the opposite of the server extension. Um, when you get to the client machine, uh, you need to apply those policies that have been set on the sysfall to the local machine. Uh, Microsoft defines client side extension libraries, which you can, uh, uh, which exp export specific functions. This is on Windows, and they apply specific policies. In Samba, uh, we also provide a client side extension uh, Python class. I've thought about extending this so that you can write it in C or C++ also. But right now, it's only available in Python. And then you implement an abstract method of the class, and I'll show you that in a bit on how to create a client-side extension for deploying your policies. So I'm going to go over some of the Samba group policies that we have currently in Samba. Some of these are in SLEE already. Uh, some are, are scheduled to hit in SP4. Um, and some will be uh, available later than that. So right now, and these are recent, that's why I say what's new. Right now we've got pol a policy that deploys smb.conf options. That was one of the first ones that I added because uh, we need to be able to manage Samba. Uh, this allows you to distribute the smb.conf parameters to any Linux clients. Uh, script policies, these are useful. They let you deploy uh, or execute scripts or specific commands on your client um, uh, at, uh, at various intervals. It, it uses cron jobs to deploy the scripts. Uh, one of the big ones that people asked for is, is to provide pseudo policies so that you can control the pseudo -overs file on any machine in your network. And also, we provide message policies. These seem kind of trivial, but some companies want to be able to um, display a specific message of the day when a, when you know when the employees log in. We also have host access policies. This controls the PAM the PAM access module uh, and sets uh, lets you set uh, uh, access rules in um, security access.d. There's also the files policy, which will push specific files to a client machine. Um, it uploads them to the sysvol share. And then when um, the uh, Samba GP update command runs on the client, it will pull those policies down or those files down and, and lay them down on the file system where you specify that you want them. Um, SSH, open SSH policies, you can configure open SSH using Samba's uh, group policy. We also have startup scripts policies. This is a little bit different from the cron job scripts that I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, so the startup scripts policy will actually let you upload a file and or upload a script, and and then you um, uh, when on the client it will execute that script off of the syswall, and um, and it happens at the startup of the machine. Uh, symlink policies. That's pretty self-explanatory. You can symlink. Um, uh, values on the machine uh, on all the clients. There's also a couple of duplicate policies because I was um, uh, making adding some compatibility with um, a Ventilla's group policy, which is a project I worked on a long time ago. Now, these are some things that are in the pipeline. So they will be in Samba 4.16. Certificate auto-enrollment is going to be in SLE 15 SP4. Uh, this is uh, this allows you to deploy certificates uh, from a, an Active Directory certificate service uh, to Linux machines, and it does it automatically. Uh, so all you have to do is join to a uh, Windows domain uh, and um, and enable group policy, and you'll be getting and you'll get those certificates deployed to your machine. Uh, I've also recently added Firefox and Chrome or Chromium policies. These are nice because we're using uh, the upstream uh, ADMX templates. And so this is actually how 
Windows system administrators currently maintain their Firefox and Chrome policies for uh, for users in their domain. So if so, say one of our customers has um, a thousand Windows machines in their domain, and they're currently maintaining or setting policies in Firefox and Chrome on the Windows machines, and they have a few Linux clients that don't get those policies. Now they can because. Um, because it uses exactly the same mechanism and it uh, pulls down those settings and applies them in exactly the same way on a Linux client. Uh, the other useful thing that I've added is uh, GNOME, um, GNOME settings. This uses um, uh, Dbus settings and, and uh, applies various um, GNOME management lockdown and user settings. Uh, this is useful for like a, um, for like a dumb client. Um, if, uh, if uh, somebody needs to um, uh, control this, the, the 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 gnome policies on a uh, hundred machines that like our our POS systems or something, um, you can use the gnome settings to um, to lock things down. You can also, for example, set a policy for for everybody in the domain that says your screen has to lock after thirty seconds of of, of not using it. Um, that, that's important for from a security standpoint because. Um, because you don't want people leaving their screen unlocked and having somebody walk by and, and be able to glean sensitive information, credit card numbers, for example, off of somebody's screen. Well, now we can do that in Linux also. Just like um, it's been able, it's been possible in, in Windows domains for a while, now you can do that in the exact same way on Linux. The, the final one that I, I actually just barely deployed, it's going to be probably going to be in 4.16. Um, is uh, firewall D policies. So this will let us distribute uh, the fire, firewall D rules from a Windows domain to, um, to Linux clients. All right, so creating a server-side extension. Um, to create a server-side extension, the easy way, like I said earlier, is to just create an ADMX template. And these ADMX templates are just a bunch of XML files, and they're pretty straightforward. Uh, Microsoft defined the the, the standard for this, um, and uh, if we follow this standard, then we can upload it to um, the sysfall share in a Active Directory domain, and then you can set these policies. Here, I've got an example of a, a uh, of a, uh, a cron job daily script policy. Uh, and here you set uh, you set where you want it to be deployed in in a registry file on the sysvol. That's this key right here, and then um, you set a value name and and so on, and it specify that it's a list. El uh, it, the elements contain a list, so you're going to be adding a list of scripts that you, that will be executed. Um, so that's what. The policy looks like you also have to specify categories. If anybody's ever used the group policy management console, you'll know that um, the categories uh, specify this, this tree structure inside of the group policy management console. And so you, uh, you specify these categories so that they're, they're nested within these um, parents and grandparent groups. You can see that here. Along with the ADMX template, you also have to provide an XML file. It's called an ADML uh, file. And this is basically just provides translations for everything. So you can have an ADML for English, like I have here, that says, this is the Samba policy. It has its Unix settings, and we're doing scripts, daily scripts. And then the um, user-friendly uh, name is going to be daily scripts here in the, in the actual list box. In the presentation, um, and then we can also like Sambo provides a Russian translation because um, uh, I believe that was added by Alt Linux, uh, and and I'm planning on adding a German translation need to do that. Um, so th these are just translation files. Uh, a side note, I am working on a Samba tool command for um, modifying these ADMX. Uh, template settings, so that we don't actually have to use a Microsoft server or Microsoft um, their uh, uh, what do you call it the 
uh, RSAT tools in order to administer uh, these policies. Right now, you could use a Samba Active Directory controller um, as the back end for most of these policies. Certificate auto enrollment won't work because we don't have a certificate signing server in Samba. But you, we can we can use a Samba back end tool, but we will. But then we have to install RSAT on a Windows machine to manage these settings. And so I'm going to I'm working to get around that so that we have a Linux tool for that. I, I also wrote some basic stuff in. I wrote a basic YAST tool that does this also, but it's um, very buggy and it doesn't work right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna demo this to you. I'm gonna show you how to create one of these. Um, again, I'm gonna be using a Windows tool to create the, uh, the templates for deploying these settings. And so I'm gonna share my screen here in a second. Now this Windows tool is called ADMX Migrator. It's ancient, it was created in like, 2000 or something, <laughs> 2005 or something like that. Um, ancient as far as software goes, and it only runs on Windows 7, so I've got an old machine running to do that. Let me load that up. Um, here we go. You guys should be able to see my screen now. Okay. Now, um, I would like to create a, a Linux uh, uh, app that does the same thing um, so that we can more easily create these. Uh, but the alternative is just write them by hand. It's just XML. Uh, but this is the easy way for any sysadmins who watch this and say, I, I, don't, know, I don't know how to do that stuff. I, I just want to do it the easy way. This is the easy way. you got to have an old VM. And eventually, we'll work on creating um, a Linux tool. And the, yeah. It is genuine. It's an M ADM or M MSNDA, MSN license, but they don't work anymore. Okay, so I'm going to delete this and start over. So I'm going to create a new template and let's call it uh, Samba. And inside Samba, I'm going to create a category called Unix settings. And inside of there. Uh, I'm going to make my scripts. So we're basically going to use the same, um, the same setup that we had in my brief overview back there that uh, showed you in my slides. So we've got uh, our, our, our hierarchy in the ADMX templates. So in the group policy management console, it's going to show up with a, uh, your administrative templates folder. And under that, you're going to see Samba. And then you're going to see Unix settings and then scripts. The reason why I have it nested that way is that there's actually a bunch of different settings under here, um, like the firewall D rules are in here also under Unix settings. Maybe I should have called it Linux settings. I don't know. Anyway, um, so once you've created your scripts directory or your uh, directory in the hierarchy, then you uh, you can create a policy, and I'm going to set the D. Let's see, display name to daily scripts, and the registry key. Oops, enter too quick. And that's where it's gonna be located in the registry file, which I'll show you that in a few minutes. It's just dumped onto the sysvol share, the SMB share. Um, we'll mount that and take a look at it in a minute. Okay, and then the registry value name is gonna be daily scripts. Oops. Okay. Now we need to set a presentation element. Sorry, I'm going a little quick. So it created this daily script setting. There's a bunch of things you can modify, like you can change. Oh, it's not it's not Vista. It's well, actually, it doesn't let you change it in the GUI. But um, I'll pull it up on in in the, the you can change the text to say like it's Samba version or something. And then in the explanation, you can say this is a scripts setting, whatever. Um, but then you have to go in and you have to create a presentation element. And we're going to make a list box. And we're going to label it daily scripts. I'm just showing you this to make it super easy so you can understand. 
daily settings. Whoops, not daily settings. Daily scripts. And then the value prefix is going to be daily scripts. So it's a lot of duplicating, it's, but it's pretty straightforward. And that's done. Now I'm going to save this. I save it into my Samba project over here somewhere. Oh, it's in there. I've got a bunch of Samba templates already. I'm going to save it as Samba 2 and save. And it automatically created an English um, ADML template alongside of that. And it dumped a bunch of stuff in there that I wrote. OK, now I'm going to go and give me just a second. I, I will share my other screen here. Okay, so this one is my terminal. Uh, this is a machine that's joined to an Active Directory domain. I've actually got it joined using SSSD because it works, uh, the group policy works with SSSD or WinBind. So either way, it, it'll work the same way. Uh, and I'm going to deploy that policy. Give me just a second. I gotta use a terminal, to, uh, a different terminal to do that. just SCPing all of the stuff over there. OK, I'm just going to make a directory here called ADMX. Nothing in there. There we go. So you can see now that I've I've copied my settings into there, and I'm actually going to remove stuff we don't need. I'm just, well, no, I'll just deploy it like this. Okay, now there's actually a Samba tool command that we can use to deploy these ADMX templates to um, our um, Windows server. So I'm going to say Samba tool uh, GPO ADMX load. And then the ADMX dir is going to be, oops, going to be this directory that we just created. I think, oh, and I, I'm already k knitted, so that should have gone through. Now I'm going to switch over. And I'm going to switch to my Windows server and show you what it looks like over there. So here's my Windows server running uh, on Azure. And I'm going to open up the Group Policy Management Console. And I'll just open up one of these for now. Takes a minute to load. And we see we've got our script settings. It's got a bunch of others. Not sure that it deployed correctly. Let me check that again.
Well, anyway, here's our daily setting that we we created, or it's not the one we created, but this, for some reason I'm not getting it deployed up there correctly. Maybe it's because I named it the same thing. Um, normally it would show up as a second uh, set of Samba settings here. But point being, it, it deploys it to here. And if we look, go back to our console, Is that big enough? Maybe I should. Can I make it any bigger? Nope, I can't make it any bigger because it's actually a a Chrome tab. But anyway, that's a, that's the best I can do. <laughs> Maybe if I if I do that, there makes it a little easier to see. I'm going to mount my Sysvol share. I'll show you where those um, ADMX templates get deployed. Going to be under the policies folder. So I actually mounted the sysvol uh, uh, domain share and under policies and then policy definitions, this is where they all end up. And there's a ton of them in there. And clearly it's not sending my, my new policy up there. I'm not sure what happened there. But anyway, the, uh, the Samba default one is in there. And that's the point is we've got samba.admx. And let's take a look at what that looks like. And like I showed you earlier, there's a whole bunch of policies here. Right here, you can see the firewall rules. They're new. We've also got um, sp.conf settings, etc. Now, if I manually copy, since my command's not working, I'm going to manually copy. Samba 2 here. And we should be able to close this. That <laughs> is a syntax error. So let's double check that. Oh, I didn't show you what I was doing. Sorry. I'll, I'll need to manually modify my policy because this actually got a error. And that reminds me. So one of the problems is that it dumps these default values in here that are garbage. Got to open it with permissions. That garbage has to be removed. That should work. Nope. Let me try that one more time. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I wonder if it's a permission issue. Anyway, I didn't upload it correctly, so it's throwing a complaint at me. All right, but if we go ahead and set, let's create a new group policy just to test with. I'm going to create this demo group policy, and we're going to go in here, and that one's not working, but we're going to use... This one. So we were doing daily scripts. And this is dumb, but I'm just going to say, let's echo hello world every day. Oh, and I forgot to show you my screen. I'm sorry. I need to pay attention to what screen I'm on. Okay, so, oh, that's the wrong one.
that one. I'll do that again. Okay, so I went in, I created this new group policy called demo. And we open it up. And getting an error message because there's a typo in there or something. But if we open up our scripts daily policy, I enabled it and set this echo hello world. Now we're going to see that deployed onto the machine. Close that. And we'll go back to our terminal again. Okay. So we've mounted the sysvol. Let's just, for fun, see what's inside of that, um, that policy. So I'm going to load up a policy parser from Samba. This is what you'd be doing, uh, or something or similar to this, in a um, when you create a client-side extension. So we need to check the policy name. So I'm going to go back to there. So let's look at our group policy we created, and it starts with D8FE. Whoops. A lot of flipping back and forth. So our policy is going to, uh, you know what, we got to find the location of that D8F. And there it is. We'll go back into Python. And let's mount this file, or open this file. Now, the, uh, the actual policy is going to be in this machine registry for a file, registry.pol. And we just read it in. Now, let's parse it with our parser and write it out to a text file. And then if we close that, I've written it to this text file right here. And there's our script we just created, echo hello world. All right. So let's move on and talk a little bit about the client side. So on the client side, uh, we have to have a way to deploy these settings. We now know we can get them there. Um, I just showed you how to do that. I mean, you can just run a Python script and rip it out of there and say, oh, there's the data. Um, but uh, Samba provides uh, a utility for deploying these for you. So um, the, uh, the client side extension, um, if in Samba, you have to inherit from a subclass of GP extension. Uh, that, um, and the GP poll extension is one of those, which can parse um, a poll file for you. Um, within the extension, we define a function called process group policy, which takes a list of group, uh, group policies that have been deleted. So when they're deleted, you have to remove the policy from the system. And then a, a list of policies that have changed. And those policies need to be applied to the system. Uh, this is basically how you delete them. Um, so for our scripts, we would unlink them, unlink the file, uh, the cron job that's in a file. And then here's how we would deploy them. I won't go through the nitty gritty details. Um, but basically, we do what we just did a minute ago. We parse it. Um, we're calling a, uh, a function of our parent class here to parse it, like I showed you a minute ago. and. Um, and then we're using the parsed data instead of dumping it to a text file. We're using it in place, and we're opening it up, and we're writing it all to these uh, executable scripts um, that are cron jobs. They're assigned as cron jobs, and um, are executed by the cron daemon. 
Um, there's also an optional part where you uh, where you print what is going to be applied. That's called resultant set of policy. I'll kind of skip over that because I'm almost out of time here. And then um, one critical part, if you're writing this as a sysadmin, um, you need to register the extension. If you're going to um, uh, commit this code to Samba, then it, uh, there's a way that it just automatically is registered. But if you're if you're using this um, in in your environment and you don't necessarily want to share the uh, the policy, maybe it's maybe it's company specific policies that you're trying to deploy. Then you would register it using this code here. There's a register GP extension function and an unregister function. So I don't have much time for a demo. Um, but I'll try to get through some of it really quick here. So let's share my terminal again. And let's see here. If we, oop, if we go into my source code, maybe I'll just show you what it looks like all put together. This is a final extension um, that deploys script cron jobs. Uh, this is uh, currently upstream in Samba. So I pointed out earlier that you have to inherit from the GP pull extension. I'm in the wrong directory, just a second. FC tags. Oh, that's going to take too long. Anyway, show you the class I was talking about. Here's the unregister and register functions. There's the parent class, which defines a abstract method of uh, process group policy that you have to define. And then if you inherit directly from the GP extension, you have to um, define the read function also. Um, the read function, for example, in the pull file does that NDR unpack that you saw me do in, um, or actually I did it in an abstract way. But anyway, it does, it um, parses it the same way as I showed you earlier. So in a in the script, you've got this process group policy. Let me explain a little bit about the details of what's happening here. You have to tell the group policy um, database which extension you're working on. Here, that's what that is when it says set GUID. The GUID is the name of the um, um, the, the name of the group policy. And then you can iterate through, and it seems kind of backwards, but you have to remove first anything that you uh, are intend to re to remove, and then you apply. Um, and I'll show you down below where you've removed them. So t uh, in our case here, I have I've stored this the name of the scripts that um, that were removed or or that need to be removed, and and I just unlink the file, so it's pretty straightforward. You're done with the policy, and if you're deploying this in for like proprietary uh, something proprietary, then you'll see you, you'll do that in a completely different way. You could be deploying files, you could be deploying specific settings somewhere. Um, so here we've got um, this is the the change GPO list. And you're going to iterate after after deleting old policies. You're going to iterate over them. You're going to parse the um, the uh, registry .pull file. You see that right here. And then you're going to um, iterate through the the keys and look for whether it's you know daily, monthly, hourly, weekly. And then it's going to um, install them in the correct location. That's basically all it's doing. And it installs this file. Uh, as a script, uh, makes it executable, like I showed you earlier. 
and then it stores in the group policy database um, the name of the file so that you can retrieve it later. It has to have a unique attribute name, and that's what this is here, is creating a unique attribute name. Um, so you store the file name, and then it can just be deleted when that group policy is removed or modified, et cetera. And then there's the RSOP, RSO, yeah, result instead of policy. All right, I didn't get to do uh, explain quite as much as I wanted to, but if you have specific questions, you can ask me. I'm happy to explain to somebody how to do this. Even in the community, uh, clients, um, if you want to be able to do this for, um, you know, uh, proprietary um, in, uh, customer information, you know that uh, I, I'm willing to help people uh, set one of these up. Anyway, that's it for me. Does anybody have any questions? What kind of permissions are there to control? Um, you control anything. Um, so I showed you in, in the beginning, there was, I, I told, talked about the list that you can control now. You can control anything. Um, if you want to, like I was saying, you, you, if you wanted to deploy and control GNOME settings, you can do that, Firefox settings, and you can write your own. If you have your own little app that, keeps track of your work reports, for example, um, like the RE command. Uh, you you can deploy settings for that command to <laughs> to a domain. I mean that seems silly, but but you could do you could really deploy anything. You could um, uh, deploy uh, files that um, control specific settings for any app. Um, that's the idea. And uh, that's why I was trying to show how to create one of these is because um, if you've got any kind of app that you're working on, you can control it in a in a um, in an organization using these tools. And the cool part for Windows administrators is that it's the same way that they would do it for their Windows machines, and there's no learning curve. And the cool thing for Linux admins is that it feels natural using the command line to deploy it um, using the Sama tool commands. And so um, you get the best of both worlds.